Mikagami is an ordinary 15-year-old Japanese boy, and what happens to every ordinary male manga character. Of course, they get a special skill and isekai to another realm for a life of harem. Back in the real world, he was really an ordinary boy with no particular talent, though he was pretty good at video games. Well, maybe decent might be an understatement, considering he's never lost a single match in any games he's ever played before. But one day, just as he's about to call it a night after another long session of gaming, Mikagami suddenly gets whisked away to an unfamiliar realm. Next thing you know, he finds himself standing before a group of eerie-looking priests. Among them is the head priest, the priestest priest of all priests, known as Zaid. Pause for a second. I mean, what in the Jurassic world even is this? Anyways, let's move on. She apologizes to Mikagami for the disruption, and brimming with anticipation, she commands her subordinates to appraise his skills. Puzzled, Mikagami asks what she means by skills. Zaid kindly explains that when a human is isekai'd to their world, they're assigned a random skill. A sudden panic overtakes the decrepit priests as they observe Mikagami's abilities. To their dismay, it turns out that his only skill is the copy skill, considered one of the worst skills in their world. Everyone falls silent at a loss for words, but not Zaid. She has a raging fit and lets out a holy squeal. It turns out that she spent the last of her precious jewels in the hopes of summoning a legendary fighter, only to be left with trash like Mikagami. She immediately orders him out of her sight to the dungeon so he can become a participant in the Colosseum battles. Mikagami pleads with the prison guard for his release, but his pleas fall on deaf ears as the guard simply smirks and walks away. Even the girl in his cell bursts into laughter at Mikagami's misfortune. She introduces herself as Zulu, a fellow Colosseum fighter like him. It's patently obvious to her that Mikagami is new to their world, so she elaborates on the backstory of this manga. Apparently, there is an ongoing conflict between their nation and their neighboring country, a war that's persisted for several decades. As such, the country's greatest asset is the strength of its warriors, whose powers in turn are determined by the rarity of their skills. However, the endless battles have caused a severe shortage of such warriors. So the nation relies on summoning warriors from the human world, which comes at the cost of a thousand precious gems. Basically, it's like a pay-to-win game, where you buy a random card in the hopes of drawing the best item or character. But sometimes, you end up with a Mikagami, and so you end up introducing your fist to your keyboard. Those with lowly skills like Mikagami are forced to become a Colosseum fighter, to entertain both aristocrats and commoners alike. Finally, Zulu reveals the central plot of this manga. Fighters in the Colosseum always engage in battles against opponents of the opposite gender, and the loser gets clapped by the winner. Appalled by the manga's plot, Mikagami asks what happens when a man is defeated by a woman. In that case, a spell is cast to turn Bruce into Caitlin and Caitlin into Bruce, so the clapping is made possible. While Mikagami is left stunned by Zulu's cruel revelation, Zulu finishes off her explanation. The reason why his copy skill sucks is because the user is unfamiliar with the skill they copy. It's like using a tool you've never used before. Finally, Zulu warns Mikagami about his likely opponent, affectionately nicknamed Torture Mary. Once an esteemed knight, she devolved into a sadistic tormentor, deriving pleasure from defeating and humiliating summoned nobodies like Mikagami. Despite the grim circumstances, Zulu reassures him that fighters are revived at the end of the match, so at least he doesn't have to worry about actually dying. Initially overwhelmed by hopelessness, Mikagami considers his life ruined. But soon, a newfound perspective takes root within him, causing confident laughter to bubble forth. He realizes that his predicament is in fact no different than a video game, the only thing he happens to be really good at. It's finally the day of his match in the Colosseum, and Mikagami stands there with a mix of nerves and anticipation on his face while waiting for his opponent. The crowd erupts in a roar as Mary enters the arena. She's introduced as a fighter who's won all 20 of her matches in the Colosseum. Meanwhile, the commentator informs the spectators that Mikagami was recently summoned and his only ability is the copy skill, eliciting jeers and laughter from the crowd. Face to face with Mikagami, Mary issues him a threat that he'll soon be made into Caitlyn and that she'll bruise him after their battle. However, Mikagami remains unfazed. Instead, he walks right up to her face with the confidence of a G. He then boldly declares to the crowd that he'll be the one to clap Mary. 
A flashback reveals the moments before their battle of Mikagami's little chat with Zulu. He inquired about Mary's abilities, and she in turn asked what she stands to gain from sharing the information. In response, Mikagami offered to fulfill one of her wishes if he emerges victorious. Intrigued by his proposition, Zulu agreed and informed him about Mary's two skills. Alas, the battle begins. Provoked by Mikagami's antics, Mary immediately unleashes her skill, Purgatory Flame, against him. He narrowly evades her fiery attack. Mary continues her barrage of flame attacks his way. This time, he employs Mary's other skill, Backstep, to deftly dodge her onslaught. Mary's frustration mounts as she witnesses her own powers being turned against her. Mikagami seizes the chance and counters with his own flame attack, but his version is diminished in both size and speed, a pale imitation of the original. She doesn't bother evading his attack, but takes a direct hit in order to belittle his efforts. A frustrated-looking Mikagami casts multiple purgatory flames this time, but again his attacks have no effect on her. Pitying his efforts, Mary offers him an alternative, a chance to submit and plead for mercy. She offers to spare him with only a few burns if he kneels before her. However, Mikagami is aware of her shenanigans, having learned from Zulu that Mary extends this same false offer to all her opponents, only to ignore their plea in the end and utterly destroy them. He confronts Mary, questioning if she derives enjoyment from such cruelty. With a chilling laughter, she openly admits to her sadistic pleasure in being ruthless to her adversaries. Finding her pitiful, Mikagami provokes Mary's ego this time by presenting her with the same proposition she offered him, that if she begs for her life, he's willing to grant her a modicum of dignity. Mary's fragile little ego gets triggered, and she reacts by unleashing a flurry of flame attacks. Mikagami counters with a rapid succession of Mary's own skills, gracefully dodging every one of her attacks. Then, he delivers a headbutt to Mary's back, speculating that she probably has back problems from carrying all the weight up front. Wink. They both tumble, but Mikagami doesn't have two watermelons wearing him down, so he gets up before Mary. He swiftly subdues her with Zulu's weapon, which he had hidden all along. He leans in and sweetly whispers in her ear, threatening to humiliate her by clapping her in front of the entire crowd. Mary pleads for mercy and concedes, marking her first ever defeat in a Colosseum battle. The head priest Zaid lets out a loud yeet, enraged by Mikagami's unexpected win over her pawn. Following his triumphant victory, Mikagami escorts Mary out of the Colosseum, who is humiliatingly leashed. Zulu offers her congratulations on his impressive victory and obtaining his first ever dabi. She also teases Mary to her face about her first defeat. Mary has a raging fit, which is promptly quelled by Mikagami's manly tug on her leash, silencing her like the dog whisperer. His harsh treatment was inspired by Zulu, who counseled him on how to handle Mary. She suggested that a girl like Mary is drawn to an overconfident top G, and that the more disrespect you show towards her, the more she'll fall for you. Indeed, Zulu seems to have been right, evidenced by Mary's reddening cheeks. Oh yeah, and the cheeks on her face also flush a bit red. Lastly, Zulu informs Mikagami that he should proceed to the reception area to pick up the thing. When they arrive at the reception desk, they receive a key to their private room, along with a couple of love potions. The receptionist explains that the room is reserved for one week until his next fight in the Colosseum. As for the purpose of the potions, it's to ensure that the clapping takes place and to prevent any other funny business from happening, such as the loser trying to bribe the victor to avoid clapping. The receptionist goes on to detail that their room will be sealed off from the outside for the first 24 hours. After that, they're free to explore the city, shop, and engage in other activities. Alas, the receptionist hands over the love potions for Mikagami and Mary to drink. Mikagami at first feels insecure, being an introverted virgin and all. But remembering Zulu's advice about being a ruthless G, he chugs the potion in one go and slams the empty bottle onto the table. Mary gets taken aback by the sight of his merciless manhood. Mikagami urges her to drink it too, and she shyly obeys. With the love potion coursing through their veins, they hastily depart to locate their designated room. Almost immediately, the potion begins to impact Mary, as the potion affects Caitlin's right away, whereas it takes a few minutes to kick in for Bruce's. Eventually, they reach their Airbnb room, finding it as advertised, complete with a double bed and a private shower, a significant upgrade from Mikagami's previous cell. Just then, 
The potion's effects begin to take hold of Mikagami as well. His heart races uncontrollably, consumed by an overwhelming desire to clap. And as you can see, it casts a figurative shadow over Mary's face. Wink. It's back-to-back -back shows on Netflix over and over for days until Mikagami finally emerges from the room, looking drained and used. Zulu greets him while informing him that he's been in there for three days. Afterwards, she proposes a shopping excursion within the city and extends her assistance in preparing him for his upcoming opponent. Stepping out into the city, Mikagami is captivated by the sprawling sights of Dangu, a fortress city that ranks as the second largest in the nation, surpassed only by the capital. However, Zulu warns him that the city is known to be shady. The two arrive at a pub where they continue their conversation. Zulu cautions Mikagami that Zaid is likely furious over his victory and will want to smash him in his next battle. Mikagami questions her motive about why she seems so eager to help him. Zulu discloses that she bears a personal beef against Zaid and hungers for her downfall. She then brings up Mikagami's earlier promise of a wish and that her wish is for him to maintain a winning streak while pledging her unwavering support to help him topple Zaid. Mikagami responds with confidence and the two shake hands to cement their alliance. Afterwards, Zulu informs him about Zaid's three other pawns. Their names are Catastrophe and Alice Cotton, but the one he'll face next is Marl Baroque, a superwoman with incredible physical strength. Zulu cautions Mikagami about the mismatch between her raw physical prowess and his copying skill, underscoring that she might be his most challenging opponent yet. Meanwhile, in the private sanctum of Zaid's cathedral, a storm of rage courses through her as she ruthlessly shatters the floor with her Jimmy Choo heels. As she seethes, her three pawns appear before her, deriving amusement from Mary's downfall. Among them, Marl gets especially excited over the prospect of getting a new toy to play with. Back to Mikagami, Zulu explains about the intricacies of how the skills are ranked. Skills start at rank 1 and can be leveled up, maxing out at rank 5. His next opponent, Marl, is a martial artist possessing three skills that provide her a buff, all of which are maxed out to rank 5. Although Mikagami can copy her skills to buff himself too, his adaptations will likely be capped at rank 3 at best, given his skinny build. With all this information, Zulu asks what his strategy is this time. After spending some time thinking, he admits he is clueless. However, he assures that he'll formulate a plan within four days, vowing to secure victory no matter the circumstances. Meanwhile, he asks her to find people with the same skills as Marl, so he can practice her skills beforehand. Finally, it's the day of the battle between Mikagami and Marl Baroque. The betting odds are unveiled, heavily favoring Marl at 100 to 1. In the locker room, Mary voices her skepticism that there's no way he can beat Marl. He appreciates her concern and remarks his surprise over how invested she seems in his victory. Mary's embarrassment becomes all too apparent, and Mikagami walks away like a G. He declares that should he emerge victorious, he'll be celebrating by clapping all night with her. The crowd erupts in a thunderous roar with the entrance of Mikagami and Marl. Marl expresses her excitement in toying with him and turning him into Caitlyn soon. Mikagami retorts with confidence that such gender-conforming transition won't be transpiring on this day. The battle commences with both contenders activating their buff skills, causing their bodies to radiate a subtle blue aura. Marl extends an invitation for Mikagami to initiate the assault. So he lunges at her and quickly dashes around Marl first before sneaking a punch right in the kisser. However, Marl displays no discernible reaction to his strike, retaliating with a powerful punch of her own. Mikagami braces himself for the impact, yet he's propelled all the way to the edge of the arena. The crowd cheers in Marl's favor. Meanwhile, Mikagami struggles to recover from the intense pain. Approaching him, Marl reveals that she allowed him to strike first in order to gauge his strength. She claims to have withheld enough power to avoid delivering a fatal blow, so she can toy with him a little longer. She grabs little Mikagami and raises him into the air. He appears to quiver in fear, clenching his teeth so hard that an audible cracking sound emanates from his teeth. Marl delights in taunting him, mocking his cowardice and frailty. Mikagami appears to be on the verge of tears, a sight which gives Marl even more joy. Just then, he spits a loogie, hitting the dangly thang that swing in the back of her throat. The crowd erupts in laughter, but Marl is unamused. She delivers a forceful kick to his stomach, sending him hurtling backwards. She informs him that he's going to get a beating like he's never had before. But just as she powers up, the expression on her face suddenly changes. Noticing the shift, Mikagami wears a smirk, 
and immediately Falcon punches her. Marl registers confusion as her body undergoes an unexpected transformation, grappling with an intense heat. Mikagami reveals that his spit contained a concentration of the love potion contained in a hidden capsule in his mouth. He slaps them drums incessantly and rhythmically until Marl faints from overwhelming sensory stimulation. With that, Mikagami secures a second triumphant victory. Mary receives news of an upgrade to her Airbnb accommodation, and she realizes that Mikagami must have emerged victorious. She blushes upon recalling his promise. Soon the door creaks open, and in comes both Marl and Mikagami, huffing and puffing from the intense excitement of their recent battle. He chucks Marl down to ready her for some clapping. She makes a futile attempt to resist him, so Mikagami swiftly delivers a poignant reminder by playing the drums again. What follows next can only be accurately depicted through the spectrum of emotions displayed across Mary's face. Eventually, overcome by her own anticipation, Mary takes it upon herself to consume the potion. In the ensuing three days, they watch a marathon of Netflix shows. Meanwhile, it's revealed that Alice will be Mikagami's next opponent. Enveloped in a tempest of anger but also worried, Zaid questions Alice's ability to defeat Mikagami. In response, she showcases her skill, triggering a violent tremor that nearly brings down the entire cathedral. Alice confidently proclaims that her spatial exchange skill is unbeatable, noting that all her prior matches ended in under a second due to its prowess. Zaid gets reassured by her competence. She's also hired every person in the city with the same spatial exchange skill, preventing Mikagami from being able to practice beforehand. Of course, unbeknownst to Zaid, Zulu anticipated her trickery and formulated a counterplan of her own. As it turns out, Zulu had enlisted a mercenary possessing the same skill as Alice's and strategically dispatched her from the city until after Mikagami's clash with Marl. However, the mercenary informs Mikagami that it'll be impossible to beat her skill with his copying skill. To illustrate her point, she requests him to employ the skill on her. When Mikagami triggers the ability, he realizes he's unable to cover even the short distance between them. The mercenary proceeds to explain the mechanics of the spatial exchange skill involving the instantaneous swapping of two spaces, with anything on the boundary between them eliminated. This, she asserts, makes it one of the most formidable abilities. To be honest, I don't even know what this means exactly, but I'm assuming you're able to instantly kill somebody with this ability as long as they're within range. However, given the limitations of Mikagami's copying skill, which degrades the rank of the skill he steals, his proficiency with the skill is both imprecise and constrained in range. In contrast, Alice has mastered the skill to a high degree, enabling her to manipulate space across the arena and even beyond. In other words, Mikagami will be virtually defenseless against her attack, and she can instantly end the fight. The climactic day of the battle between Mikagami and Alice arrives. This time, the odds reflect an even greater disparity between the two contenders. Alice approaches Mikagami and informs him that she despises all Bruce's, but Alice assures him that she'll properly transition him to Caitlyn before she claps him. Just then, Alice overhears a hater over in the distance, talking trash about her. Immediately, Alice incapacitates the man's legs, despite the considerable distance between them. Zaid lets out a villainous laugh and, I mean, come on, guys. Anyways, amid the crowd's certainty that Alice is destined to triumph, both Zulu and the mercenary watch undaunted, maintaining that Mikagami has a fighting chance against Alice. Finally, the battle initiates with a resounding gong, and Alice immediately casts her spatial exchange skill on Mikagami. Just as everyone anticipated, there's an immediate rupture of red stuff from where Mikagami stands. However, a twist of surprise unfolds. He manages to stay alive and trigger the skill himself, causing a vial to burst in front of Alice. The ensuing fumes induce Alice to stagger and collapse. It turns out that his gambit was to dodge her skill like the Matrix. Although the strategy seemed dubious and too risky, Mikagami banked on the element of surprise in order to throw Alice off guard. Indeed, this audacious plan seems to have paid off exactly as he intended. Feeling faint from losing a hand and leg due to Alice's earlier attack, Mikagami exerts the last of his strength to drag his body towards her before he loses consciousness. He draws out Zulu's weapon but his strike misses due to stumbling on some red stuff on the floor. Nonetheless, Alice's fear causes her to pass out, giving the victory to Mikagami. The crowd cheers in excitement while Zaid lets out a priestly screech. Following the intense battle, Mikagami drags Alice to his Airbnb to add to his growing roster of girls. 
Resisting her loss, Alice struggles against him, unwilling to acknowledge her defeat. Along the way, a scheme forms in her mind, a collaboration with Mary and Marl aimed at ambushing Mikagami. However, upon entering his private quarters, they courteously welcome Mikagami's return. You know what's coming next. Mary force-feeds Alice the potion and thus another three days go by. When the worn-out and parched-looking Mikagami finally emerges from the room, Zulu brings up a conversation about Mikagami's last opponent, Catastrophe. Not much is known about Catastrophe, and her true capabilities are a mystery. She is rumored to possess a staggering 108 skills, whereas even the most extraordinary warriors have five skills at most. Astonishingly, only eight of her skills have been unveiled to the public, leaving the veil of secrecy intact over the remaining hundred in her arsenal. 